Hello again Einstein class. I hope you've had a good week. Do you remember who we were talking about last week? I'm not sure if you'll remember his name. He usually lives over there on the shelf and he's got a big white beard and I've got two of him haven't I? I've got a knitted one and a small plastic one who sometimes goes in the bath. Here he is, this one. Do you remember his name? Moses. Well we finished our story last week part way through. So we got to the place where Moses had been asked by God to go back to Egypt and ask Pharaoh, who was in charge and wasn't very nice, to let his people go, to let all the slaves leave the country and go to a new country that God had chosen for them, the promised land. And Moses, here's the big one, blue, he was a bit worried about doing that. He wasn't sure he could do it on his own. So he asked if his brother could go with him. Today we're going to hear what happened next. So what happened next was Moses went off to see Pharaoh and he met Pharaoh in the court in the beautiful palace in Egypt and he bowed very very low and he said um Pharaoh God says you must let his people go and he's told me I can lead them and you're to let them go and stop them from being slaves ever again. And Pharaoh said, I don't think your God exists. I don't think he's as clever as my God that I believe in. So Moses did a few things that showed that his God did exist and that God wanted Pharaoh to let the people go. And so Pharaoh said, oh, OK, then. But then he changed his mind. So God sent Moses back and Moses had to say to Pharaoh if you don't let the people go God says he's going to send a plague to the country now plagues are all sorts of things in a way you could say we've got a kind of a plague going on now because coronavirus is all over everywhere isn't it and it's stopping people from doing things they want to do and it's making people poorly and some people have died but a other plagues can be other things like um, there was a plague in Egypt of frogs and they went everywhere. And then there was another plague of flies. Bzzz, can you imagine? All over everything. There was another plague of locusts and locusts ate all the crops so there was no food. Then there was a weird one where everything went completely dark even in the middle of the day. And then there were lots of other things that God sent so that Pharaoh would change his mind. Eventually, eventually after quite a few nasty things happened, Pharaoh got so scared and so angry that he said to Moses, go then, run away. I don't want your people here ever again because they have been awful and all these things that are happening to my country are horrible, so you need to go. And so Moses went to the people who were slaves people of Israel and he gathered them all together and he said right tonight you need to get ready you need to pack your bags you need to get your shoes on you need to get everything together because we are going and they set off and they set off into the desert and they left Egypt and they were so excited to be free but do you know what happened Pharaoh changed his mind after they'd gone he was really cross because he suddenly realised all those slaves who had been building things like the temple and the pyramids had gone and he wanted them back to do the work. So he sent his army racing after all the people of Israel and they raced through the desert on chariots with horses and they raced and raced and raced and they caught up with God's people who had been freed from slavery. And all the people looked at Moses and they said, what have you done? We followed you and you brought us here into the middle of the desert. And now we're going to be attacked by the Egyptian soldiers. It's much worse than being a slave. And Moses said, oh, I don't know what to do. And then he heard God say to him, they were by the sea, he said, hold up your staff. Hold up your stick over the water. So Moses held up his stick over the water 
and the water parted. It separated into two huge walls of water with a path down the middle. And everyone looked amazed and very, very shocked. And they were looking in one direction at all these Egyptian soldiers chasing after them and in the other direction at this big pathway through the sea. And they thought, what on earth is going on here? And Moses said, come on, we need to move. And so they went down onto the, so onto the soft sand of the sea and they walked through with the big walls of water on either side of them. And Moses stood at the edge holding up his staff like God had told him and they all got through. And then Moses went through and they got to the other side and then the waters came crashing back down and the Egyptians couldn't catch them and they got away. Moses listened to what God told him to do and he followed God's voice and God's ideas. There are lots and lots of more adventures that happened after that with Moses, including how he got these funny stone things. And we might manage to tell that story another day. But Moses showed something else about following God, which is really important. A couple of weeks ago, we were thinking about Simon Peter. And then we thought about Zacchaeus, who was hiding up the tree. And then last week and today, we're thinking about Moses. They were all ordinary people but they did what God told them to do. And they found that they had an amazing experience because God wanted the best for them and God showed them the way. So now we're going to spend a moment thinking about how it could be if we follow what God asks us to do, how our lives could be changed and how amazing the world is. So let's be quiet and we'll say another prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this amazing world and we thank you that even when we're scared and nervous, if we listen to you and we think what would God want us to do, we can find strength to follow you and find the most amazing world. We ask that you'll be with us today and every day. Amen. See you soon. Bye bye.